make sure the stream is on. Yeah, it's kicking in. So just a quick little intro for those of you watching this video on another platform if you're not watching this live. There will be a link in the description of this video, wherever it's uploaded to, that'll take you to the beginning of the story. Okay, so I'm estimating that will be about 10 minutes, uh, plus or minus a couple of minutes or so, I assume. Okay, so for any of these ASMR stories or stories that we're gonna be sharing, there will be a link in the description of this video taking you to the beginning of the story. And anything that ends up coming up, I'll try to post links to reference to in the description of this video. Okay, uh, just wanted to get that intro out of the way. Uh, and there's uh, some people are really fun. Spot of tea. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Fast car. Nice lord. Hello, hello. Been listening to system <laughs> up to this point. Same year. I started yesterday. I listened to uh, System Without Toxicity and Steal This Album yesterday. Went for a walk and just cranked it right. And this morning I listened to Mesmerized and Hypnotized. Uh, this, it was a blast going through those again. I hadn't listened to, I hadn't listened to what, the whole collection of System of Down for a while. Um, so it was really good to listen to, especially now. Like the timing of this is insane, considering uh, what's going on geopolitically, right? The System of Down's uh, music is very heavy oriented towards uh, towards everything to work towards, right? Uh, it's very. Uh, peace related anti-war um, it's against the systems that be and the powers that be and it's against definitely what's going on in the last couple of days right wow 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 hey folks hello Casey how are you doing uh, oh I should have done that good idea <laughs> yeah I ended up uh, I'll supply uh, just in case anyone's catching this um, here let me post this link as well okay in the comments okay and this is the article that i wrote the review of system of down that i wrote back in 2005 2006 or so okay uh, i had to read through that as well just to prep myself for what, was I, what was about to get into do you have a favorite album you know what after going through it man uh, i can i can tell you this okay and I've thought about this because people keep on asking me what's my favorite album, what's my favorite song. I like the whole library, okay? I like every song in uh, System of Down, Toxicity, and Steal This Album. Everything. Every single song is brilliant. And I used to love every song except for one in the double album, Mesmerized and Hypnotized, right? Uh, but after going through it, there is uh i remember that there's actually two songs really that i don't i don't think i don't appreciate as much as the rest of their library so as far as favorite album goes i like that you know they're they're all magnificent they're all great albums i think it should be a compilation of listening to the whole thing uh, it's like nina simone or or a few other, other artists, right? New Jabaz. You should listen to all of New Jabaz's library, all of Nina Simone's library, all of System of Down's library, right? All of uh, all of John Lee Hooker's music, right? I don't know if I've listened to all of John Lee Hooker. I've listened to a lot of John Lee Hooker, right? Uh, so that's my take on it. And I'll leave uh, leave my the two that I'm not uh, I'm not a huge fan of. One one is the the baseball story even though i've seen tony tony danza in glendale play baseball it's just not my thing right and uh, there's another song that's not my favorite the toxicity of our city yeah 100 our city yo from belfast hello 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 from the west coast of canada uh what are we in we're four minutes in now i've said the little note that you see here I said we're going to start in 10 minutes and I'm going to try to stick with that for 10 minutes. Hello X, how are you doing? Um, but if the conversation taking off and stuff like this for tomorrow's stream, I'll increase the time to 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And uh, just to let you guys know what the odds are, what I'm going to do, well, this is what I'm going to do. After the story is done, I'm going to end the stream. 
I'm going to turn off the comments that's appearing on this side when I'm telling the story because that way um, the mods don't have to mod. They can just listen to the story just in case we get a horde of trolls uh, sweeping through or something, right? So for these ASMR stories or stories, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the chat on the screen popping up and whoever is watching this live, you can still have a conversation and stuff like this. And after I tell the story, I'm going to end the stream and I'm going to go through the comments and read the comments and maybe there's corrections depending on what we're talking about or questions and stuff like this. And then we'll deal with that stuff in the beginning of the next stream. So I, if people want, we'll definitely make the start of the story later than 10 minutes. Okay, we'll see. This is an experiment for my part, really. What, I, uh, uh, what I'm working up towards is basically introducing live streaming to a lot of the content related to mathematics that I was creating. So basically live streaming the way I create this content. And the reason I want to do that is because uh, uh, I want to let people know uh, what I do to create this content. And if they can uh, give me some advice of how to improve it, fantastic. If they want to know how I'm doing this, because some people have contacted me regarding equipment and how I do things and stuff, because they want to get into it, they'll have a good idea of what it takes to do at least what I'm doing anyway. Okay. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that um, I should have made it longer than 10 minutes. This is like, this comic's coming up. I want to read them. Uh, da, da, da. I think the first one is my favorite. Yeah, System of Down, the first one, and the, the way they start their music. Fantastic, fantastic. The toxicity of it. They're all fantastic, but Steelless album has to be my favorite. I love Steelless album, man. It kicked it up a notch, especially the the energy that was present at the time with the build up to Iraq and Afghanistan well underway and stuff. Nujabas and Jay, Jay Dilla are some of my favorite hip hop instrumentals. You know what, Jay Dilla, I haven't listened to too much. I gotta loop that stuff, I gotta loop that stuff. Yo, yo, Hakushu, hello, hello. You were here last stream. I think last stream was probably your last set was your first time here. Thanks for popping by again. I really like Serge's uh, Elect the Dead, his solo album. Yeah, I, I checked it out, just uh, looking this up again. And he's put out a few. I've only listened to, I think, a couple of them. I gotta check out the rest. Good idea, I'll keep a wee eye anyway. Okay, great. That's about uh, just Casey's mentioning, good idea. Uh, just because of the hordes of drones sometimes we get, right? Uh, yeah, Serge's first solo album is really good. I really like Scars on Broadway too. You know what? Someone mentioned Scars on Broadway before. I don't know if it was you, T, uh, Spot of T, um, but I've grabbed it and I gave it a quick listen. I haven't um, loaded it on my MP3 player yet because that's the, uh, when I'm looping things, when I go for long walks, that's one place I just thing send things into a loop. So I'm, I like the initial sound of it. So I'm definitely gonna load it up and give it a few whirls. Uh, da, da, da. I haven't heard it. We'll check them out. Da, da. And that's uh, a spot of tea. Yeah, scars. Are, that's the, um, Casey, that's the guitarist from System of Down. Uh, Darren, oh, the bad names. I think it's Darren, whatever Armenian last names are. They're like mine, but they're hard to remember. Uh, so it is very good. It's very good. They're brilliant. It's Darren, yeah, Malakian band and they only ever did one album but it's oh they only did one okay scars and broadway is fantastic so is Serge's solo albums oh, i bought a s signed copy of the hariki cd from his wife's site cool cool man we're one minute in from what i'm saying we're gonna start in 10 minutes so i'm gonna kill off the sign and for those of you who want to know the friend that i'm going to mention in the story is the person that we did uh, uh, basically how fast is a human punch video on and I'll link up this uh, video in the description of the videos when I load them up I should have definitely made it 15 minutes at least for tomorrow's session we'll definitely make it 15 minutes good morning I have fond memories of listening to System of Down in high school looking forward to the stream cool cool uh, T 
Tea and Comics, right on. I like the song on our crew. Hello, people. Hello, Valiance. Hello, Valiance. So let me take this down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the view monitor. And we're going to go with this camera here. And here is the mic. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the chat on the screen. Uh, like that, that's still my favorite search so long. I don't have to see these. Okay, chat's off the screen, guys. Okay, so that way the moths can relax and uh, just enjoy the story. And hopefully, uh, this will go smoothly. Again, this is a little experiment for my part. Okay, and this is the angle that we're going to use. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set. the chair up here. I got a little tape on the ground. Hopefully we're all centered and whatnot. And um, this is, uh, just to let you know, this is a story or this is a video I've been planning to make for a very long time. It's just a opportunity to present itself now and doing this live definitely adds a certain element to this. Um, so I thought uh, it'd be a nice little experiment and it's definitely something on my checklist that I really needed to get this done and uh, the reason I really wanted to get this done was because uh, since putting out videos of me being in front of the camera and that stuff started off with me doing the math videos um, the first regular comment that I've been getting on those videos is hey I didn't know Serge Takayan taught mathematics because both me and Serge have the sort of same ancestry background sort of Armenian background and I guess um, we do sort of look the same with the goatees and the beard and sometimes changing the look up and stuff like this so that's one of the most regular comments I've been getting on my channel that hey I didn't know Serge Takayan did uh, taught mathematics or did ASMR and when I started doing ASMR the other most regular comment I've been getting on my channel is, um, <laughs> is uh, uh, you know I'm to comparing me to Bob Ross saying that I'm the Bob Ross of mathematics or Bob Ross of, Bob Ross of comic books so that's a huge compliment on my part uh, for me as well so thank you for those comments but this one specifically, um, I wanted to, to make because what I've been doing, whenever people have been leaving, leaving the comics that, hey, I didn't know Serge Takeon did ASMR or did comic books or, or did mathematics is, uh, I would mention that, no, I'm not Serge, but I do love their music. And then I would link in the, in the reply, I would link to a review of System of a Down I wrote regarding Mesmerized and Hypnotized, their last albums they put out back in 2000 and the review I wrote back in 2005 so I've been doing that for a while and um, <laughs> and that was before I started putting videos on YouTube so I didn't know it was gonna play out that way but that's something I've been doing and what I thought it'd be nice to do is put out a video regarding this that way I can sort of change my repertoire and start you know if anyone says hey I didn't know search the Kaon was doing whatever it is that I'm doing I can link it up to this video okay so that's sort of the intro to um, why I thought it'd be a fun little story to share okay as far as um, the first time I heard about System of Down okay now it was sort of a it was back in 2000 2000 or 2001 but I think it was it was it, it, it could it's from that period right it was before 9-11 okay just because that's the sort of a reference point for many people who have lived through that period you sort of pre and post or during or whatever it is right so it was back in 2000 2000 and 2001 and it was at a house party okay and the house party we were at it was um it's uh it's what, what's considered to be sort of a burner party. And burner party is um, sort of parties that happen outside of the period of Burning Man. Burning Man is a festival that takes place in Nevada 
um, once a year and it's for basically a week if you end up going to it or a few days anyway um, just that's just the festival itself set up and set up and take down there's a lot more but it's a sort of a festival a sort of alternate festival there's music there's a lot of electronic music and stuff like this there's a lot of art and whatnot so that takes place once a year and outside of that period there are people who have made it their lifestyle to go to these parties go to this gathering and throughout the year there's you know within that community there's parties that happen uh, throughout the year either at homes or club parties or whatnot and this was sort of a house party that was taking place from people that considered themselves to be burners at that time and our path had sort of crossed because of me and a friend uh, a friend that was at the party with me we went together to this party we'd gone to Burning Man a couple of years so we got to know certain people through the communities through the through the network we were connected up right and uh, just to give you a feel for uh, some of these parties some of these gatherings it's sort of a sort of a gong show to a certain degree right there's a lot of things going on it's a lot of fun if it's in a house usually there's different things happening in the house and there's people that come into these gatherings go to this festival and go to these parties and collaborate together um, that are from different backgrounds some people are you know heavily into the music scene some people are heavily into the art scene some of them are, some of them are into uh, performance art or whatnot some of them are into um, experimentation um, entheogens uh, psychedelics and whatnot right or just basically into even there are some people into politics and economics that delve into that realm uh, that's sort of the realm that I came from and the realm of sort of ethnogens I was sort of reading a lot doing a lot of research and just to give you a feel of the mindset uh, that could be present there from that realm aside from a lot of electronic music and performance arts and stuff like this a lot of uh, sculptures being built and a lot of uh, a lot of physicists, a lot of, uh, a lot of science in the community as well. They build contraptions and Tesla coils and stuff like this, right? But for me, I, I was sort of entered that realm through a realm of um, entheogens and doing a lot of research, a lot of Robert Anton Wilson, Terence McKenna and stuff like this. And if you want to get a feel for sort of the mindset that I came from or the realm that I entered this this world was basically um, there's a couple of books that I have and people have asked me uh, about my book collection and I put out a couple of books a couple of book videos one of them was showing you guys my uh, sci-fi fantasy book collection and the other one was sort of showing you guys unpacking when moving here unpacking a lot of boxes and putting up the library um, in my bookcase and I showed you guys my math book collection right and people have asked me since putting out these videos to share more of my book collection so what I'm going to show you is the two books that I actively buy collect aside from comic books right as you know I collect comic books and I collect sort of minor other things but I really don't actively purchase anything else but these two books that I'm about to show you are sort of from that realm of ethnogens and um, through the realm of psychonauts right and the two books one of them is um, if you want to get a feel for some of the activity at these types of parties that we would attend right um, one of the books is Salvadoran the psychedelic essence of Salvia divinorum by DM Turner okay so if you want to get a good feel of what I'm talking about this is one of the books you could read and this is freely available online if you do a search for this you will be able to find the book online and I've read this book at least three times right and I actively collect it I have these are the last two copies I bought in the last I guess five months or so I have a couple of other copies kicking around somewhere okay so this book and the other book which is again by DM Turner if you want to get a very good feel of um, the information available out there as Robert Atom would say we're sort of 
at present coming out of the dark ages, serious dark ages, in regards to uh, nature, psychoactives, uh, ethnogens, in terms of alternate ways of being and alternate ways of thinking, right? And this is the other book by Terence Mc, uh, by um, D. M. Turner, which is, and this book again is freely available online. If you want to have a good feel about the type of information kicking around out there, right? And this book is the um, Essential Psychedelic Guide by D. M. Turner, and this is uh, basically D. M. Turner was basically a psychonaut and someone who basically experimented with ethnogens and wrote about them whatever he could. He basically was into sharing a lot of information, right? And this party had a lot of that influence associated with this, as well as a few other types of activities, right? So it was a pretty big house party and all, all the rooms were open and different rooms, different things were going on, right? And me and my friend, and this is the friend that we put out a video, um, a sort of a physics math video out, uh, where we sort of try to do our little calculation, where um, we try to measure how fast the human punches. And I will provide the link to the description of the video in sort of the math and real life series, because he sort of he teaches Tai Chi and has had a lot of martial arts experience. So we sort of did a little experiment uh, measuring how fast uh, a human punch can be and he's the same person that I went to Burning Man with right a couple of times and we were there at the party together, right? So we went to the party and we sort of you know checked out the place went to different rooms and stuff and um, What we ended up doing um, You know, we, we hung around a few places We met a few people people that we knew and, you know said hello and whatnot and we found ourselves in the patio Okay and the patio, if you've never been in a house party in a patio, and this is one of the reasons patios are really popular when it comes to bars and restaurants and stuff like this, because patios have a sort of a flow to them, right? There's a lot of, uh, you know, they can't be a gong show. There's a lot of uh, activity in patios. People come in, in and out. So what, we, what ended up happening was we sort of found ourselves uh, in the patio, sort of chit-chatting with people and... Um, we ended up staying there for some reason for for a while for a couple of hours at least during this during this party and we saw you know we knew for every people that were sort of drifting so they were going in and out and you know there's a couple of naked people running around we saw you know one of our friends one of the people we knew at the time you know it's fairly free so she was sort of naked and for some reason she you know, I think the conversation came up that, uh, you know, a conversation of martial arts and Tai Chi and stuff came along. And uh, for some reason, she started doing uh, karate kicks into the air and stuff like this. So uh, the level, the energy of the of the place was sort of <laughs> sort of kicking off, sort of shifting, was getting later into the night. Right. So this sort of continued on. And uh, me and my friend were just laughing it off. We found a whole whole experience uh, very amusing and the lights were on in the patio right and it was you know all around us because it was late into the night the lights were on the patio and all around us was fairly dark and we're sort of in a house where there's like trees around and stuff like this and I looked at my friend and all of a sudden I saw him smiling and he sort of nodded like this to me and I looked over my shoulder and <laughs> And we saw this guy coming, and the patio was in the in the backyard, and there was a stairs going into the yard, right? So the patio was lifted up one level, um, sort of a porch, I guess, right? It was a fairly big porch, and he nodded like this, and I looked over my shoulder, and we saw this guy guy coming out of the out of the dark, and he was full on metal. He would he had his heavy leather jacket on. He had like serious boots on, right? He had his, he was full on metal, right? And it was a fairly heavy set, um, heavy set guy. He was a younger kid. I was, at the time me and my friend were around, I was probably in my early thirties. Well, we were probably both around 30 plus or minus a little bit, right? And when he came up, he sort of came out of the darkness and he had a, he had a huge smile on his face. Like the guy, uh, the guy when he came on, he was like, 
you knew he was having a great evening, right? He was just basically glowing. And he sort of strutted forward and he came up the stairs and you could, when he was coming up the stairs, you could hear, you know, his, his footsteps coming down, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, coming up, right? And this party, as I mentioned, it was sort of more geared towards um, a lot of electronic music, a lot of um, a lot of uh, sort of art related music uh, or art related uh, expression and a lot of ethnogens and stuff like this and there was a certain vibe in the place right and it was definitely not a metal vibe right and burning man uh, the couple of times when we went there wasn't a really a metal vibe to the place right and all these parties we've gone to metal is actually the least amount of influence in that realm right so even though you know both me and my friend that we're at this party with we've known each other since high school right and we our path sort of went separate ways and then somehow it connected up again right but just to let you know me and both me and my friend um we've we we grew up in high school together to a certain degree right for a certain few years and we were heavily influenced by metal we went to iron maiden's number of the beast concert back in 1982 together right when we we're like wee little kids so we we're both familiar with metal and we we're both we both very much appreciate metal right so when this this kid this guy walked up and he sort of came up and he popped up he sort of took the final step to the patio to the to the porch and just went ta -ta -ta -ta. and he looked around and all of a sudden you know the porch was sort of buzzing and all of a sudden sort of the energy sort of calmed down a little bit and me and my friend we just looked at each other we were like awesome right we're just loving this and within a few seconds there was sort of a uh, people disappearing to a certain degree, right? They're, the crowd sort of died down. Sort of half the people, within a couple of minutes, went back inside the house, right? And the guy came over and he pulled out a, <laughs> pulled out a flask from his coat pocket and took a sip and he came over and we were close by and somehow he ended up, I don't know, I don't remember how we ended up being within the same circle and it wasn't really too much of a circle at this point it was just me my friend this guy and there might have been a couple other guys we were talking to and we're heavily into discussions of of multiple things going on I, it was the, the conversations at at this party and some of these parties we went to had been fairly good right people are were into exploring information and stuff like this but for some reason metal really didn't infiltrate into this community too much right so we were there t chatting away and the guy found his way to us and he was drinking and the conversation started picking up with him okay so me and my friend definitely um included him in our conversations and uh during the conversation you know i believe the conversation with metal came up and we started talking about metal and slayer was definitely part of the conversation we talked about iron maiden or whatnot black sabbath and he dropped a few names of um metal because for a period you know i've gone through just like comic books i go through periods where i listen to a lot of metal and not listen to a lot of metal and back and forward right and during that period or the build up to that period i hadn't been keeping up with the metal scene right so he started dropping some names and stuff like this and you know the conversation carried on and uh we found out that this this kid i said the kid from the beginning you couldn't tell at the beginning but he was like 18 years old and just give give you a feel for what he looked like right he was he was one of those tanks right he was shorter than both me and my friend but he was a tank his neck was thick he was red-headed he had a smile from ear to ear and he was solid he would be a guy that uh, <laughs> he, he would 
He could easily be a bouncer in a club, right? But he had the kindest demeanor you've, you've ever seen, right? He was so, so kind and happy, but he was, you could tell that he was, he was extremely quick and he had zero fear of anything, right? So the, we, we talked about this and he, he was redheaded, so you could tell that, uh, you know, my friend is Irish, so I've been around Irish a fair bit or somewhat and redhead somewhat. And there's a certain temper um, there. So you could see there's a flame in the background, right? And right now he was in an amazing mood and stuff like this. So the conversation was absolutely brilliant, right? So I sort of, I think I asked him where he was from and I'm not sure what he told me. And he, you know, he, he asked me, asked us where we were from. My friend said he was from Ireland and stuff like this, or he was Irish. He wasn't from Ireland, he was born in Canada, but Irish ancestry. And I mentioned that it was um, Armenian ancestry, born in Iran, mostly Canada and stuff like this. The questions have been asked over the years, right, since putting up these things. So I sort of said my ancestry is Armenian. And he sort of turned to me and said, oh, you must know System of a Down. And I went, System of, System of a what? <laughs> he, he said it again and I it just didn't register he was if you've never heard for some reason for me the the name system of a down didn't flow right so he said system of a down I sort of said what system of a down right and I don't don't even think I was saying it properly I was like system of a what <laughs> he goes he goes system of a down and he said they're all Armenian from LA I go what they're like they're a metal band they're from LA and in Los Angeles and Glendale and in Hollywood and Pasadena, in all that area, there's a lot of Armenians migrated there um, for multiple reasons. One of the biggest influxes was, or the initial influx there was after the 78 um, sort of revolution in Iran, there was a huge influx uh, of Armenians into that area. And um, after the, uh, the USSR when uh, USSR disbanded and Eastern Europe the walls came down there was another influx uh, of Armenians in that area so there's a huge Armenian influence in that area so I went I appreciate the fact that they were from LA but I'd never heard of them and I didn't know who these people were who these people were right and I believe at that time they'd only put out one album and Toxicity I believe came out in 2001 so they had released system of down their original album and toxicity might have been out might not have been out right so we, he mentioned this i was like well, no i've never heard of him man he's like oh dude you gotta check him out blah 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 so i sort of asked the guy i said well what kind of metal is it because in the metal community there's different um different different types of metal right it's sort of when you delve into it you realize at the beginning it was just metal and then slowly people started specializing in the type of metal that they created, right? And right now there's there's so many different genres of, of metal is absolutely brilliant, right? It's just like grown to a level where whatever you want to appreciate in terms of uh, musically, you, you have, you, you're, you're leaning towards, you can definitely find a certain style of metal to suit your taste, right? And at that time, System of Down had, had introduced to a certain degree a new type of metal, from what I understand anyway. And uh, the guy, the best way he explained it to me, I sort of said, well, what are they like? Are they like Slayer, like Sepultura? Like, they're not glam metal. So I'm, because I wasn't really too much into glam metal, so I'm not, it's not glam metal or anything. And I didn't think it would be because this guy, had a serious feel to him, right? He was, he was full on metal. I mean, he basically, as soon as he walked on the porch, half the people on the porch disappeared, right? So there's a certain amount of energy there. So that's definitely not glam metal. It'd be more hardcore, I believe, right? And um, and he sort of looked at me. And by this time, by the way, the conversation had picked up and we were there for a while. And the kept, guy kept on pulling the flask out. He, he finished one flask, he pulled out another flask. and during this conversation um i guess he had arranged to meet someone there somehow he found out about this party and during this conversation there was there was someone else 
that had joined them and they came through i believe anyway they came through the backyard as well and there was this there was this uh, girl that was just all over him and she was sort of metal and also connected with this community this the people at this party right so she had to hook up through this community as well right and i guess she was the one that introduced him or for some reason they found themselves there right so when this guy was talking to me about system of a down there's this girl sort of just holding on to him and just giving him uh her full attention right and he was on cloud nine he is loving this thing me and my friend were loving this thing just a different vibe and the conversations and you could hear different things going on right because as soon as people realized that there was no threat here the party was not being uh <laughs> i guess taken over infiltrated um or whatever it is the vibe was not going to change a lot of people started coming out again and it was a nice flow to the place right so i asked the guy um you know hey man so what are they like right Sepaturo, a slayer iron maiden like black sabbath like what is what are they like and he sort of looked at me and goes no man it's it's like it's he, he's like it's got a, it's got armenian from understand it's got armenian influence to it they got they go pa -pa 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 -pa, and they go fast and they go they stop and then there's pauses and there's dances he goes you have to check it out it's like it's like polka metal then i went polka metal and i turned to my friend and go, what, the, what the hell is polka metal right and he said, look, man, just check into it. So I said, okay, for sure, I'll check into it. And you guys know uh, me and names, right? I don't, I'm not good with names. And he hung around for a long time at that party, as did me and my friend, right? So throughout the night, next few hours, I kept on going to him. I go, what was the name of that band again? What was, what was the name of that band again? So I kept on asking him, and he kept on saying, system of down, man, system of down, man, system of down, man. And this is late in the evening, right? So everybody's in their own that space at this at this point right and um so the party continued and the, the, i never crossed paths paths with this kid again i crossed paths with a lot of other people um in that community we still participated and um slowly what i ended up doing what happened to me was because of this guy mentioning system of down um you know when we took off that night and i thanked him a lot and i i have no idea what his name was and i don't know if i would recognize him again if he didn't have the same vibe still maintained and i in my heart i, I hope he can he maintained the energy that he had because it was absolutely brilliant really he he had an impression on me and my friend in a big way right because it it reminded a it rem, he reminded uh us of us when we were younger as well right and it was only halfway through the conversation through the night that we found out that it was only 18 years old right so we're like right on right uh, but basically uh, i kept on asking him who the band was and he kept on saying system down system down system down and uh, what happened was basically i didn't remember the name so i think in the next week or so i asked my friend you know we're hanging around the fair bed so i asked him again what was the name of that band this guy kept on saying so he said you know my my friend wrote it down for me system of down and i downloaded system of down and i gave it a, gave it a listen i don't know if it was their initial uh, their first album or toxicity right and i was like wow that's trippy uh, i've never listened to system of down and you're not familiar with this back in 2000 2001 it was a unique sound i hadn't heard this before okay so i was like what is this so i looked you know i didn't at the time the internet wasn't what it was right there was no wikipedia there was forums and stuff like this so i looked them up a little bit and uh read up on them right and i listened to a couple of their songs but uh, i didn't give them a world right i downloaded them at basically i don't know how many computers three or four computers uploading downloading at the time during that period right sampling a lot of material because i was searching for a lot of material because i was going through uh, a huge growing phase right information growing phase i was teaching myself a lot of information because a lot of information that i required was not available through the library was not available in record stores bookstores you could order some stuff online but some of the stuff you couldn't 
you get like you would have to find someone to place an order and maybe two months you get the information and whatnot right now like uh, just these two books that I mentioned with uh, with Terence McKenna and with uh, uh, DM Turner's Salvador and A um, you know Salvador, Salvador and A the psychedelic essence of Salvia Divinorum by DM Turner this book the only way you could get your hands on this was to read it online it was available online to read right and same with this one uh, the the essential psychedelic guide by dm turner this again is only a, at that time was basically the only way you could read it was go to Eerowid and Eerowid um, i was going a lot downloading a lot of robert anton wilson lectures this book uh reading it online terence mckenna uh, alan watts uh, ram das just a tremendous amount of information castania getting audiobooks read read to me and stuff so i was in a certain research phase what i was going through growing pains to a certain degree if you want to think about it right uh, so I listened to System Without, but it didn't really grasp me at the time because I was, you know, looking into mathematics and uh, starting out the the tutoring thing, uh, teaching mathematics. I was reading a lot of physics, uh, chemistry books, as chemistry, physics, and math books as well, right? So I sort of put it aside. I made a note of it, who they were, right? And when they really, System Without, when it really hit my radar was after 9-11, okay? And the reason for this is, I didn't. I wasn't sure if I was going to go down this route, but I guess I'm going to go down this route. And the reason it hit me, uh, they hit my, my radar after 9-11 and the build-up to 2003 with uh, the build-up to the Iraq war, right? The reason they hit me, because they were, System of Down was very active in the anti-war movement and the peace rally. So you would see them pop up in different places and the main reason system of down hit my radar again after that conversation that, that conversation was maybe a few months in right was um was basically because of a letter serge tankian had written after 9 11 and if you dig down online if you do a search you should be able to find that letter and this letter was uh, you know it hit my radar because i sort of went wow this guy's got <laughs> seriously balls of steel to be able to write this letter in the united states living in the united states there were a few other people that sort of commented uh, sort of stepped away from the anger from the from the frustration from the propaganda and tried to express themselves now you could be the judge if he expressed himself properly or not there were other people that were doing the same thing but full respect to him for writing that letter right and sharing it and putting it out there and it was pretty powerful letter and worth the read now worth the read then and that's when they really system went down really hit my radar and i went okay this is kicking up a notch so i started uh, because of the build up what was taking place i did slowly start immersing myself in metal as well and system went down is what i jumped into first and i started as soon as i did it i started looping the daylights out of it right and just looping it and that kid telling the story uh the first time basically that uh, ex uh sort of uh, telling me about system of down that impression that he made really stuck with me when i was listening to that music and you know i love their music and i kept on listening to them right and one thing i can honestly say is this i thought i was a system of downs fan i really did i thought it was a system of dallas fan until i went and saw them live in their i believe it was mesmerized that came out first or is it hypnotized that came out first um i don't know which one it is i wrote a review of it um in 2005 so they put out a double album 2005 2006 and i caught the first show that they were doing for that album the first tour right and i went in there thinking that i knew their music i was a fan of their music just the way i was a fan of iron maiden black sabbath uh, metallica sepatura just the same way there right but i really really didn't appreciate the power system of down had until i saw them live 
Okay. I went in there with, it was uh, good old, Bor good old Bar Bordello that was opening up. So it was me and a couple other friends. Uh, um, the, a couple other friends that we went with. One of them was Armenian, another one was uh, uh, this uh, girlfriend, female friend that I had that wanted to really check out good, good old Bordella. And my Armenian friend, I I bought two tickets and he didn't know about them. And I told him, listen, you know, you have to go see them because he was heavily into Armenian stuff. And I said, this is full on Armenian band and they're pretty popular. And uh, they're like, they're doing phenomenal, man. We have to go check this out. So he came along with me, right? And we were there and we saw Guru Bordello and System Down was kicking, was starting. And for Guru Bordello, for the opening band, we were sort of, we had, because I bought the, like the, the tickets sold out like this, right? And I was lucky enough, I lined up in the morning to get the tickets and I was lucky enough to get tickets. And the only tickets I was able to get were the blue seats they're really high up right and i wasn't sure how this was going to work out because i hadn't gone to this stadium for a long time it was the same stadium that i saw iron maiden in in 1982 right i think it was 82 the number of the beast concert right it's uh it wasn't like the top-notch stadium it was still the stadium that you know the ones that the bands that haven't all made it onto the mainstream play at but it was very large it was a huge stadium right it's a fantastic stadium i prefer that stadium to the other stadiums right so i wasn't sure what this was going to be like because i hadn't gone there for a while for a metal show so we found the seats closer to the stage for good old bordello and you know we, just like any concert we enjoyed the crowd that was around us is a metal crowd and if you've never been around the metal crowd it is fantastic it was one of the most amazing crowds that you'll ever be exposed to right so we found seats closer up but then as soon as system was coming on people started going to their seats going to their area and the floor was just open floor right there was no seats there i don't believe so anyway no there wouldn't have been open there would have been seats there there would have been trash a long time ago right so it was basically uh just a floor stage on the ground right and that barrier set up and i wasn't into jumping the barrier or going to the ground because i i was with two other people that there weren't uh and i wasn't into it either right jumping over and going to the front right so we went up to our seats and we were in the high stages right in the top and i hadn't seen system of down live right and i thought i was a fan i knew their music i loved their music i loved their lyrics but i i hadn't felt that energy before right and you could sort of start feeling it uh before they went on there was sort of a energy that was basically saying that you know what everybody here or 99 percent of the people here they know this music and i've been to a few metal shows okay not as not as many as most but i've been to a few right and i personally couldn't believe it when they came on when that first beat hit the whole auditorium just went Ooh right everybody we were in the top like we we're f four seats i don't know how many five seats from the top six like top row right everybody just went boom and the stadium lit up with lights and i looked around and everybody like i i am i have never ever seen this before in my life at any show including Iron Maiden including Death believe it or not Death Lover had one of the most amazing concert tours ever in the 1980s okay I, I believe they took out the seats on the floors after that Death Lover concert because the seats on the floors were done for right I have never ever seen anything like this at a metal show or any sh any show in my life where the whole auditorium just went and they raised their fists and everybody, it felt like everybody was singing the lyrics and they stayed up until the end of the concert. I have never ever seen this in my life, right? Everybody sang 
danced, jumped, raised their fists in the air, pounded their legs. It was insane and the energy was just friendly, joyous, angry, frustrated, intelligent because the lyrics are absolutely brilliant. Let's, as I've sort of written in the review that I wrote for System of Down, it's basically one huge, huge play message that they've been creating since day one, since from day one of their their musical career. So it's it's one energy that says enjoy, love, share, experience, inform, do fight back raise your fists in the air and help each like it's insane the energy right and when the concert was over you could just breathe and when we walked out of this out of the auditorium you sort of people were just chanting people were just juiced up it was energy and it just really really rejuvenated people me included okay so that's basically sort of a little bit longer than this just uh for this video for people who've been sort of commenting that they didn't know Serge Takeon um, did math videos or comic book asmr uh, i figured i'd sort of tell you the story share the story with you and uh, let you know that uh, i'm not Serge Takeon i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly from system of a down I do their I do love their music. I do loop their music. They are definitely, definitely worth worth uh listening to. And this is sort of me creating this video to share with you, tell you the story of the first time I heard about System of a Down. And a little bit more, I guess. And a little bit more. Okay. And uh that's it for now i guess um you know i hope it came out okay i hope i didn't miss uh too many little details right and if i did uh, i'm gonna read the chat in the description uh in the in the chat room on this live stream and if you're watching this on any other platform i'll definitely link up uh provide links to the description of this video to the review and to anything else i might have mentioned uh, in this little story okay that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next uh live stream